All right, everybody, we got a treat for you. I'm here at the Reawaken America tour with a true human hero. Forget about American, Canadian, Russian, it doesn't matter. Arturo Pavlovsky has been one of the main guys that stood up to the COVID-1984 nightmare on multiple levels. And uh, I know a lot of you guys have seen a lot of the videos that he's in, um, using to close down his church at the trucker convoy. Um, really being persecuted after the fact. Uh, I've been lucky enough to spend time with your son, interview your son a couple times. Arturo, first of all, how are you? And give us the latest update on your fight. Well, we're good. We're great. Actually, believe it or not, I'm feeling absolutely excited. I, I don't know how to express that. Something about is about to happen. Something extraordinary, something amazing is about to happen. I think 2024 is actually our year, a year for freedom, a year to turn the tables around, a year to go after the villains. So uh, we're good. Our family is good. I mean, we went through hell back and forth, but God allowed us to survive this. Um, according to his word, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil. Why? Uh, evil because God is with us and that's exactly how was unfolding the story was unfolding with God uh, being there with us I have just uh, appealed the decision of the courts the corrupted courts of course you're dealing with the same thing I, actually it's a global uh, craziness with the corruption within the court system so-called justice system uh, we've appealed the decision but uh, as, as just uh, last week um, I filed a lawsuit against the Canadian government. We're going after the Attorney General, we're going after the Crown Prosecutors, judges, uh, all levels of government, municipal, provincial, federal. We're going after Alberta Health Services that implemented these ridiculous mandates and restrictions on our lives, on our liberties. Uh, we're going after the Chief of Police and uh, his uh, entire department, uh, Jane Doe, uh, John Doe, and anyone else that has participated in this conspiracy. We're going after them for conspiracy. And I think that's the message I want the people to hear now. Enough of this victim mentality, enough of uh, poor me, this is what happened to me. Yes, what they've done is absolutely unbelievable. I only saw things that was done to me in movies. And I am a Polish immigrant, as you can tell. <laughs> I grew up behind the Iron Curtain under the boots of the Soviets. And what they have done to me, I only saw in a Hollywood productions. Metal cages, stripped naked, uh, a solitary confinement, psychological, uh, mental, uh, physical torture, freezing conditions, hot conditions, a uh, max spot for the most dangerous terrorists. I was in psych ward. They put me, without the evaluation of the doctors, without the knowledge of Alberta Health Services, in a psych ward against the law, <laughs> Russian style. So what we went through, what I went through was horrifying, was crazy. But I believe we are shifting from that timeline into a new timeline when I truly believe that God is saying, now it's time on offense it's time to move after them it's time to go after them so i'm super excited about that because i'll tell you why I, i'm a pastor as you know and i i have forgiven them i have forgiven them a long time ago but justice demands retribution if we will not go after them that's not justice and I don't know, a year from now, or two years from now, some other people perhaps with different faces, different names will come up with some other nonsense. That's why it's so important. Nuremberg trial was very important, not so we could go after a few people. It was to send a message to the future villains. You can hang for the crimes against humanity. You can be charged and prosecuted for crimes against humanity. You cannot hide behind the famous, I'm just following orders, I'm just doing what I'm told, like I was told hundreds of times by the police officers, uh, by the sheriffs, uh, by the government officials, by the health inspectors, I'm just following orders. Uh, no, this will not cut it. So that's where we are at, uh, now. I am so grateful to be here. You got to remember, I was on, um, when I was released from prison, I was on house arrest for a year and a half. And my crime, as you remember, was a sermon. As a pastor, I delivered a sermon. 
to a hurting Canadians, to a truckers during during the biggest civil rights movement in the history of Canada. And peaceful all, civil rights movement. Peaceful. We had barbecues. We had kids playing uh, street hockey. We had uh, bouncy houses. We people were feeding each other, loving each other, praying with each other. We were singing together. I mean, it was incredible, peaceful, amazing coming together in solidarity against the oppression of this totalitarian regime. And I delivered a message on a private property in a restaurant. And here is what I said to the people, stand for God and state given rights. And the same message I have for you, stand for God and state given rights. Never ever allow them to steal that from you because this does not belong. Freedom doesn't belong to the government. Freedom is a gift from God. And every man deserves to be free. Um, and I said, do it peacefully. Believe it or not, <laughs> during my 90-minute sermon, three times I told the Canadians, peacefully, no guns, no swords. And it was that sermon that got me in trouble uh, when I was arrested by every force in the country. I was arrested by RCMP, that's like your FBI. I was arrested by undercover police, Calgary Uniform Police, SWAT team, anti-terrorists came uh, with a special team. I was arrested by detectives. I mean, it was a gong show, closure of the roads. I stepped out of my house and I was taken down like El Chapo of Calgary, Al Capone of Canada, and uh, interrogated for hours, taken to prison, stripped naked and, and, and etc. So we must go after them because if we don't people will start losing hope that the villains can literally get away with murder so that's where uh, we are at, uh, at, at now i could not come to america because of my house arrest so i'm super excited it's like it's like seeing my brothers and sisters that i could not see for a while it's like a family reunion i, I don't know if you're understanding I missed my family, my friends, because we are truly a family. Like-minded individuals, patriots, lovers of this land, lovers of God, lovers of freedom, uh, people that are willing to be men. Imagine that. Like, imagine that for a change, right? That we were going to stand up for ourselves? Not wearing a skirt, and I, no offense to the Scottish. Hey, I know, I know plenty of women that stood up way better than their yeah. men. Like, yeah. it's unbelievable. And, you know, speak to the fact that you said, we can't be victims anymore. We can't act like that. We have to fight to be victorious. That's right. And we are victorious. That's the message. We are victors mm -hmm. already. We have already won. We just have to switch from the mentality, poor me, the giants are too big, into, well, if God is for us, who can be against us? I mean, the greater is he that is in me than the one that is in them. We already won. The enemy just doesn't know it. You, you see, a lion doesn't have to um, pretend that he is the king. A lion doesn't have to um, persuade the hyenas, I'm the boss here. The lion, the only thing the lion needs to do, a lioness, of course, is to show up. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is to the people, just show up and God will do the rest. Well, I agree with you. First of all, I think the fact that you're talking about accountability is so important. Whether we get Nuremberg to or not, we need people that did this to be accountable. That's right. We cannot let this slide. I 100% agree. And somehow, some way, your message actually made it to the EU because there were people in some positions of power that said, those around them, I can't believe they're doing this. This is yeah. obviously a takeover. This is obviously illegal. This is obviously anti-human and pro-authoritarian. And, you know, through that, your son was able to speak there. That's right. Obviously, um, Ezra Levant, Rebel News, they helped you a lot in your journey. But it was those type of people and the everyday people stepping up That's to right. donate, to get out there, to bring your story to the masses that you're sitting here today. Because if people had just whimpered and whined and cowered, you may be in a prison cell. Oh, de definitely. Actually, we have political prisoners sitting in prison as we speak right now. We have political prisoners in Canada, just like you have political prisoners in the United States of America. It's super, super important uh, for the people to to chip in, to help, to participate. Because some people uh, will come and say, well, what can I do? Like, I'm just a little person. I, I can't stand against this regime. I'm, I'm not David. I can't take down the giant. And I get that. Every, every hero, put it this way, needs an army that would back him up. It's like my brother David always has those um, interesting saying. He says uh, during the interviews, he, he would quite often say, 
we're in the trenches and we're willing to keep shooting, but you need to provide the bullets, mm. right? One man cannot do it. One group of people, you know, a, a small group of people, one church cannot do it, but we can do it together in solidarity, just like I saw when I was growing up behind the Iron Curtain when 1980 came and solidarity took it to the streets. Millions of Poles joined and in just a few years later it was over for the greatest empire during that time, the Soviet Union, and we got our freedom back. It's possible. We can do this. We've done it before. We can do it again. And everyone is as important as David fighting the giant. Because if you know your story, David takes whatever God has given him, the stick and a stone, takes down the giant, uses the enemy's own devices, so the court system, educational system, media, just like we're doing right now, it takes the enemy's own device, chops his head off, in other words, finishes the job. But when the army, the people, you, just like you, saw the victory, they chased the uncircumcised Philistines for days, and the spoil was enormous. So we are the tip of the spear. We are the, we are the, you know, the tip of the sword. We we break icebreakers. Do that so others can take their freedom back. When we go down, be sure of it. You're next. So if you can um, be part of this journey, if you can contribute and help us, like we spent already millions of dollars in legal fees. And I'm looking at this story and without the support of the people, without crowdfunding, without people chipping in, without the prayers, you know how many hundreds of thousands of people prayed for my release? Hundreds of thousands, if not millions. Everywhere I go, people come to me that their entire church, entire community was praying. That's the power of the people. And I find it fascinating that in this soil, in this ground, in the United States of America, which I love so much, like I quite often say, I don't care if Americans like me or not, I have adopted myself. I am an American. <laughs> we'll you, take you. you. Trust me, we'll you, take you. <laughs> you stuck with me either you want it or, or, or not. Um, the idea of freedom, the idea of uh, the land of the brave and the, and the free, the land of opportunity, the land that a man can work hard and achieve something and pass it to the next generation. It's, it's absolutely so beautiful. But again, one man cannot do it. We have to do this together. And we have to understand that everything is shifting now. They are on the run. They are panicking. They are making stupid mistakes. And good, let them make as many stupid mistakes as possible because they're exposing uh, who they really uh, are. So I'm, I'm super excited. I think we are about to see incredible things. Um, they have hammered us for a long time. I think now uh, hope is needed more than ever. And I think 2024 is going to be a great year of many victories, many exploits for those that were faithful, because that's the key. You cannot be a flip-flopping, a whore of Babylon, as I call it, that goes to bed with every monkey that votes. You have to be a man of integrity. You have to stick with the truth. And the Bible says the truth shall set the captives free. Well, I always say you have to be a person of principle. I mean, I don't like to play team baseball. I hate both sides, I'll be honest. I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a conservative, I'm, a, I'm not a liberal. I like to see where the truth lies, right? And this is, in my opinion, and it's never been more apparent, this was an anti-human authoritarian movement. Right. And one of the key things is to try to trick the people into thinking their freedoms come from a government. Yeah, Some I'm... comes from, from man. You know, and that's the key, like whether or not you believe in this God or that God, a higher authority gives you human freedom and they want to take that that's away right. from us on every level. So on one end, it's a spiritual battle, but just like you said, when we need heroes, I suggest people look in the mirror, be your own hero and find out what little thing you can do. What thing can you organize? Who can you donate to? Where can you bring this fight? Because we have to bring it to the forefront and whether that's you running for office, being in your city council, showing up to a school board meeting, um, refusing to bend the knee to a uh, health authority or the CDC yeah. or the FDA or any of these people, you just have to say no. You have to start with no and then you have to be on that journey to fight these monsters because 
like you said, whether or not we take out this round of monsters, there's always another round of monsters that are social That's climbers right. that want that power and are going to try to feed off it. And that is why I think it's so important we have to hold some of these people criminally accountable. So where do we go on that journey of criminal accountability? What is the next step to make 2024 a total victory? While well, you file a lawsuit, right? Um, I'll tell you why this is so important, and that's what we are doing. My uh, legal team is absolutely excited about it because you uncover things. You move the stones, you lift the stones, you see what's in the shadows uh, through discoveries. You find out who said what, who texted what, um, uh, emails, you know, information. I, when I was a businessman, you know, 150 years ago, it <laughs> seems like, I, um, I remember we used to have this saying uh, that information is more valuable than money. Because if you have the right information, making money was easy. It, it is easy. If you know where to invest, you know, what to buy and when to sell, all those different things, making money is, uh, is really easy. It's the information that is crucial. If you have the right information, and that's what we're doing, and we're doing our best, and that's why I love Reawaken America so much, because that's information. If you're looking for the truth, you will find it. You will find God here, you will find freedom here, you will find family here, you will find the information about health, about everything, right here. So, Discovery is going to allow us to see who did what and why and that's powerful, then we will know who to go after. Um, so imagine they have done a loafer against us for the past three and a half years, and even before that. I mean, I have been arrested since um, and harassed since 2005, so for me this is not my first rodeo. Uh, with, the, with authorities, I was arrested for publicly reading Bible, I was arrested for feeding the homeless. So they have been doing this for a while. And if you were in the front line, then you became a target. So now imagine 100,000 Americans or 100,000 Canadians filing a lawsuit against them, naming them personally, making them accountable personally, the chief of police, the sheriff, the police officer, so-and-so, Jane Doe, John Doe. We're going after you personally. We're going to make your life a nightmare, just like you tried to make our lives a nightmare. I'm telling you, what I have observed, and, and again, you're talking to a Polish immigrant, tyrants are extremely weak and very fragile. Tyranny is very fragile concept. That's why they need to, they're, they're keeping their power by lie, manipulation, disinformation, misinformation, um, a truth stands on its own like a pillar and they're terrified of the truth because it's a house of cards. So now imagine when we go after them, when you see, uh, and I'll, I'll encourage you, when you see a politician that did this to you in a restaurant, yell and scream, make them uncomfortable, challenge them. I'm telling you, they break. They break so easy. You well, know, let me speak to that they, for just they, a They're second, like man. this. They're like this. They <laughs> they break. So I'm I'm a big person in taking this magic box, and instead of everybody scrolling and watch a 30 second dog or cat video, you do exactly what he just said. You go up to an individual that has power, that is an authoritarian, that has reigned tyranny upon men, and put them on blast. Get them to make a comment. Make them feel uncomfortable because That's it is right. that information power. That's that right. They have. Because the people behind these people, often, they have almost unlimited financial resources to yeah. wage lawfare against you, but they don't have the resource of you putting them on blast and exposing them in front of the world. You know, one of the videos over this time period that I, I really did enjoy was when Anthony Fauci was on the streets of DC uh, with I believe it was the mayor at the time trying to get people to take these hate and lie shots and one gentleman is just like I'm not taking this shot and he owned Fauci for four or five minutes made him look like a fool that's something they put on a PBS documentary well no one watched the PBS documentary everybody watched Fauci getting owned and look there is something to be said about the court of public opinion it it's gives right. us momentum and you know, you talked about information being power, you know, and that's the way to make money or really, I think, empower ourselves on many levels. But I would also say that truth is the ultimate love and love is the ultimate truth. And sometimes that's going to be uncomfortable. Love's not always easy. Truth is not always easy. That's right. Sometimes it's hard. But ultimately, if you gravitate towards that, if you fight 
for that, your life is going to be so much more enriched, and so are those around you. That's, that's the key. That's right. And you know, um, <laughs> I was, I was crazy attacked when I used my words Nazis, Gestapo, when I uh, compared what I observed during that time to my upbringing, you know, behind the Iron Curtain, the KGB, you, you act like communists, you act like socialists, you act like the Nazis. Well, you have to understand that everything Nazi Germany did was lawful. They passed the laws. Do you know how many laws were passed in the middle of 1930s against the Jewish people? I do not. Over 2,000. Over 2,000 laws were passed against the Jewish people. They always play the same book. We are dealing with evil versus good. We're dealing with people that want to be pharaohs. And everyone and anyone and anything that competes with what they want, it becomes the enemy of the state. So they're doing exactly the same thing. They're flipping the pages how to become a tyrant and attacking us viciously. So when I use the words Nazi, when I visualized for the whole world in the middle of the highway what the Nazis do, arresting a preacher, a pastor for just simply keeping his church open, nothing criminal, nothing evil, nothing bad, and they um, doing it the Nazi style, they wanted to make an example out of me, but I think God made an example out of them because it showed the whole world who those people really are. What is Gestapo? Why have I been using those titles? Because Gestapo simply means a political police. So those officers that swore to uphold the law and protect us have been breaking the law, acting just like the Gestapo under the Adolf Hitler regime. Those officers, the health inspectors, were acting just like Dr. Mengele. Well, well, let me say this. You know, you talked about the health inspectors, right? And a lot of people don't realize that one of the modus operandi of the Nazis during that time period was the Department of Hygiene. That's you right. Know, so you talk about the same thing. Playbook. Yes, exactly. The same thing. You know, that's why I used it. you got to remember, I teach history. Mm -hmm. and not just theology, but history. And I'm also a Polish immigrant. So I grew up in a city that had a concentration camp. I mean, I played with my friends in the bunkers of the SS. I have been in Auschwitz-Birkenau, I mean, I don't know how many times, many times. I have been in other um, concentration camps, so we still had bullet holes in our buildings from the Nazi era. So the history is very dear to us and it was very visible, it was very tangible. So I think you should pay attention to the people that grew up in hell. And when we are telling you the hell has arrived, you should fight it to the death. You should kick it, push it as hard as you can. Because if you don't do this now, I'm telling you, if you will not do this now, it's not just about you. Your children will pay the price. Your children and their children will be forced to grow up and live in hell. I always say to the people, like, who do you think you are? Excuse me, you got a badge, so what? You got a title, so what? Like, who do you think you are? We have given you that badge. I pay your salary so you can protect me and my interests, not to rob me from my rights. If you cannot do that, that's fine. Well, find someone that can do this job. Fire them. Fire the police officers. Fire the sheriffs. Fire the, the chief of police. Fire the politicians. Recoil. Let's get a new one, a one that will actually be a servant of the people for a change. Because we don't have servants, we got greedy dogs and traitors. If you would elect me, you know, my name is Arthur, if you would make me a King Arthur, I'm telling you, I would charge those people with treason. Listen, they need to be charged with treason. And, you know, you talked about law enforcement. In this country, I think the sheriff is so important because he's the elected yes. law enforcement official that can locally fight back against these federal and national And theories. some did. And some did. I met some that did. And they have succeeded. And they protected the people. Kudos to them. You see, I want I want on the record, uh, there's some good police officers. Absolutely. There's some amazing sheriffs. I met them. I'm telling you, incredible human beings. There's some good doctors, not many, but there's some good doctors. There are some good politicians, I mean, really not many. 
<laughs> yeah. So, but there's still some good human beings. I actually uh, came here with a friend of mine. He is a deputy mayor. Um, a Canadian politician and a pastor, incredible human being, marched with us, bled with us, was in the papers, ridiculed attack and stood strong. So there are still some good people. Support them, donate to their campaigns, don't knock. I mean, become part, be a man in the arena. That's what I'm going to be talking about this today, that you can uh, be a spectacle, you can, you can just watch it or you can Become the man in the arena. Engage, help, support, pray, donate. Um, if you want to be part of what we're doing, go to streetchurch.ca. Street, because we're still feeding thousands of people. We never stop feeding them, even though I became the first Canadian to get a COVID ticket for feeding the poor in 2020. I was the first one to be targeted for feeding the poor. We still feed thousands of people. Streetchurch.ca and become part of this. I mean, this is the most exciting time during our lifetime. I mean, this is an opportunity. I believe that the people before us wished they could live during our time because it's so exciting. Like, look at this. Um, I, I can feel the vibration. I can feel the excitement. I can feel the love. I, it's like, it's, it's beautiful. It's amazing. This is our time. Don't be discouraged because you look at the giant that is smoking you. So what? Let them mock us and then just go and find a smooth stone and show him who he really is. Just a mortal. You know, I had the saying, I was a professional boxer and a martial art expert. So I used to have... I did a, not know that. Yeah, that, that's why I got... I was made for this. I was made for a war. I was made for a fight. I, I, I think if they would study my life, they would never attack me. Because you don't attack a Polish immigrant, especially when he was trained to fight. Like I was since I was a kid, growing up in hell in a ghetto. So um, uh, I, I, I'm telling you... Um, those big giants, I used to have a saying, the bigger the guy, the, the easier it is to hit and, you know, you can't mess. And the greater the sound is going to be when he falls to the ground. So instead of being intimidated by their muscle, they're flexing their muscles, puffing their chest. I'm a, I, I got a badge, I got a pistol and I, I'm this and I'm that. No, you're just an uncirc uncircumcised Philistine um, that defies the armies of the living God and your time is coming up. Your time is coming up, and uh, I think 2024 is a year, a beginning that will take a lots of giants, many giants down. Well, I'll tell you what, I think that we have to be giants in what we believe, because our belief in humanity is what's going to win this fight. Arturo, this has been a pleasure. What would you like to leave the audience with? Just like I have been always saying, we are, we are lions. We don't apologize for being who we are. We are the children of the living God. We are, our daddy is the almighty God. Like, I mean, think about it. Lions never bow before the hyenas. We eat them for breakfast. So I would say to you, just bon appetit. Go out there and enjoy your meal. Thank you so much, man. God very, bless. very, very great meeting you. Thank All right, you. folks, you heard it. This has been a great interview and we will see you on the flip side.